Hi everyone, today I want to talk about one of the great features in our Olympus cameras called the One Touch White Balance. Basically what this is, is the ability to set the white balance under the lighting conditions that you'll be taking a picture in. And you know, our camera has auto white balance and then it has uh, preset white balances for sunny, shade, cloudy, etc. Um, and we also have custom white balance where we, we can actually set the temperature of the white balance, say 5500K or 7500K, etc. But the one touch white balance is the ability to take a picture under any lighting condition, measure the white balance, and then take a picture with that. Now, the way you access the one touch white balance feature is you go into your super control panel and then you go into your white balance cube. But before you do that, go ahead and put the camera into manual focus first. And you'll see why in a moment. So now go into your white balance cube, click OK, and scroll over until you see the one touch white balance icon, which looks like a little flower. And there's actually four slots that we can save four different custom white balances to. Uh, so to set the custom white balance here, we click the info button. Now it says point the camera at a white sheet of paper. So I'm just going to grab some copy paper. This is 95 bright. And I'm going to fill the frame with the paper and take a picture, like so. And then I'll ask you if you want to save this, and you can say yes. And now the white balance has been set to slot number one. And then go back into your super control panel and go back to the focusing mode that you wanted to use. And the reason you turn off the autofocus is because sometimes the camera will have trouble focusing on just a plain white sheet of paper. Now, one thing you have to be careful of is the flash white balance. You want to make sure that's turned off, especially if you're using flash. So we'll go into the menu, go down to the custom menu, go down to menu F for flash, and then go over here and you'll see flash white balance. And there's a couple of settings here. We have flash white balance, we have auto white balance, and we have off. You want to make sure this is turned off, especially if you're using flash. So we'll click OK. Because otherwise, what will happen is, if you have the flash white balance turned to auto or flash, it's going to override any setting you have here in the super control panel when you're using flash. And if you're not using flash, it doesn't matter. All right, now that I have the one touch white balance set and saved the slot one, I would just go ahead and just take the picture with that setting. Now, a couple other tips when you're setting the one touch white balance is make sure the white piece of paper is reflecting the light from the primary light source. So for example, here in my studio, I have an umbrella right here. I would make sure I would point the paper towards the umbrella near my face if I was doing a portrait, for example and take the one touch white balance here. If I was outside, I would want to point it towards the sun, for example, so that most of the light is coming from the sun. It's going to reflect it off the paper to give you a more accurate white balance reading. And then in the shade, it almost doesn't matter, right? Because it's all diffused anyway. But put the white paper as close as you can to where the subject will be standing or setting. Now let's go out into my backyard and do a few test shots. And I'm going to compare the camera's auto white balance versus one of the camera's presets, uh, shade in this case, and then also against the uh, one touch white balance using the white piece of paper method. And then I'm going to also compare it against this device that I recently acquired, the Data Color Spider Cube, which is a professional uh, white balance calibration tool. So let's go out and get started. All right, let me show you my setup here. I have my EM1 Mark III with the 45 millimeter f1.8 and uh, my X-Pro trigger here. And we'll also be testing out the Spider Cube again, along with this uh, white piece of paper. And this is a 95% bright. So um, it's pretty white, or 95% brightness. And then over here, I have my, uh, just my umbrella with my Godox uh, V1. Uh, flash up here on a light stand being held down by a little five pound dumbbell down there. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, two ambient light shots, one with auto white balance and one with uh, in-camera shade white balance. 
And then I'm going to do two more shots, one with the uh, spider cube in the shot so we can uh, set the white balance and post-processing. And then I'm going to calibrate the camera using this uh, white piece of paper. And again, this is uh, almost pure white at 95 brightness. So let's go ahead and take the uh, ambient shots first. So let's go into aperture priority. We'll set it to f2.8 and we'll go to auto white balance, auto ISO, custom timer with autofocus and face detect. Everything looks good. All right, now let's set the camera to shade white balance. All right, very good. I like how the light's hitting the top of my head. <laughs> that looks pretty good. All right, now let's uh, calibrate the camera to the white piece of paper. So I need to take the camera off the uh, tripod. And uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to face the paper in the same direction that my face was in roughly the same position to try to capture the same light. So let me go into the custom white balance feature. We'll do number one. We'll click the info button to get started. And I was facing about like this. All right, good. Now we're taking a picture with the custom white balance. All right, I'm gonna do an ambient shot with the spider cube now. And we'll have to fix this white balance in post-processing. All right, here's the flash shot raw image. So let's go ahead and take our white balance eyedropper. Let me just punch into the cube. And we're gonna pick the side that the flash hit. So, and let's adjust our black and white points. right about there so that the black trap is full. And then the white points, we just need to get the white areas to stop blinking in this case. Uh, looks like huh, one click did it, all right. All right, now let's uh, do a couple of flash shots. So I'm going to put the uh, camera into manual mode. Now that was with the flash and auto white balance. You can also set the white balance to flash white balance. So let's put it to that. Okay, good. Now let's take a picture and calibrate with the white piece of paper. So I'm going to turn the flash white balance to off and go to custom white balance. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture with the flash firing onto the paper in about the same position my face was and uh, set the white balance that way. So we'll go back in the custom white balance, hit the info button, and that should be about right. Good. I'm gonna say yes. It says 6900K in the display, but let's go ahead and take a picture now. All right, good.
Now let's take one picture with the uh, spider cube in it using the flash and it doesn't matter what the white balance is on the camera. You just need to make sure it's facing. All right, here's the flash shot raw image. So let's go ahead and take our white balance eyedropper. Let me just punch into the cube. And we're going to pick the side that the flash hit. So, and let's adjust our black and white points. Right about there so that the black trap is full. And then the white points, we just need to get the white areas to stop blinking in this case. Uh, looks like huh, one click did it. All right. So as you can see, there was quite a difference between all the white balance settings. And uh, the one touch white balance will get you really, really close. It's not quite as good as say using the spider cube, but it's very close and it's cheap, right? All you need is a white piece of paper and just use the feature in our camera. Now I can't tell you how many times I've used the uh, one touch white balance in street photography, especially at night. What I'll do is I'll set the uh, one touch white balance the street lamps which are usually tungsten and very yellow and orange and it just makes everything look really weird so once i set the one touch white balance to the street lamp everything else comes alive because the lighting coming through the windows and doors of all the storefronts and offices they have all different kinds of lighting right led lighting which is kind of blue and then fluorescent lighting which might be kind of a greenish tint and then there's holiday lighting all of these things look great once you get the street lighting correct. And um, there's many other creative ways to use the one touch white balance, especially when you're using flash. But um, I have other videos for that. But anyway, uh, that about sums it up. So I hope you liked this video and you found it helpful. If so, consider subscribing to the channel, hit the like button, maybe buy me a coffee. But uh, either way, I appreciate you guys watching and hopefully we'll see you again soon.